Welcome to our Bible study for teenagers by teenagers. Jesus used scripture to defeat Satan. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that as we hear today's lesson, we know that you do not leave us defenseless against Satan's attacks and temptations. Thank you that you have never and will never abandon us. I ask that you help us to be alert to his temptations and give us the strength to resist them. In Jesus' name, amen. The Armour of God Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that, whenever I speak, words may be given me, that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. Hi guys, so today I will be doing the lesson for Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 24. So for this passage, I will be answering three questions. The first question is, what does this passage tell me about God? So, the first thing that we hear in verses 10 to 11 is that God is mighty and powerful and he protects us from the devil in spiritual warfare. So spiritual warfare is effectively the devil trying to fight to separate us from God's purpose and God's promises. So it's things like the devil planting thoughts in our minds that we're worthless, that God doesn't love us, making us anxious and worried. Those kinds of things are examples of spiritual warfare. And it is constantly happening. And if we do not label it um, and kind of acknowledge the existence of spiritual warfare, then it can oftentimes take a hold of us and be really, really harmful for us. Um, So this whole passage is basically telling us about how we can fight the spiritual warfare by tapping into God's power through his armor. So the armor of God that Paul describes here is essentially a framework which we can step into when we surrender ourselves to God, when we have a good relationship with him, when we let him be in control in our lives. And this framework is what protects us from the devil and from his schemes and the things that he tries to make us believe which aren't true and which are very harmful towards us. So essentially what this passage is telling us about God is that He loves us, he protects us against the spiritual warfare. He is all that we need in order to fight against the devil and 
um, that this armor of God is what we can experience. We can experience the various components of peace, truth, righteousness, faith, when we surrender to God and let him be in control of our lives. So the second question is, what does this passage mean to me? So in verse 12, we see that we need to expect spiritual warfare, that this is something that is happening all around us and something that all of us have experienced. Um, as I've said, you know, there's little like thoughts in the back of your mind that that little voice that is telling you untruths. That is actually the devil that is trying to make you go further away from God. Um, and it's important to know who that voice is, where it's coming from, so that we can label it, address it, pray about it, um, let God take over and move on from it and not let that voice control us. Um, and the second point, as I've said, is that we need to surrender and trust in the Lord in order to be able to fight this battle because we cannot do it on our own. Um, but stepping into the armor is the way to escape the devil's hold that he can have on us. Um, and then the last point um, about this word this means to me is that this passage shows that we need to declare it fearlessly um, and declare our faith in God confidently. Because Paul says in verse 20, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And it's very strange to me that Paul is asking to be able to declare the gospel fearlessly because he is writing this passage from jail where he is in prison because of his beliefs. He has written books of the Bible that challenge the traditions of the time. And if you look at his life, he seems to be one of the most fearless Christians that there ever was. Um, but even so, he still needs to ask to be able to be confident in the Lord, to be fearless. And it shows us that we constantly need to be pursuing a close relationship with God, an understanding of him, um, a confidence in him. And that it's something that is an ever growing process. It never ends, this kind of pursuit of the Lord. The last question is, how can I apply or share this? So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to strengthen our faith. So through things like prayer, um, reading the Bible, reading scripture, um, letting like surrendering to God in ways, you know, like just letting your anxieties and worries go and letting him just take control. Um, and this faith is very important in terms of releasing ourselves from the devil's hold in, in terms of spiritual warfare because in verse 16 he says and as he says in addition to all of this take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one so that passage in itself just tells us how absolutely important faith is in terms of being able to defeat the devil in this spiritual warfare um and then the next point, as I've said a lot of times, is that we need to surrender to the Lord and just put him first in our lives and let him take control. Not try and fix everything ourselves, because it is a thing that a lot of us tend to do, myself included. Um, and then the last point is to just avoid checklist thinking about this, because this this armor of God isn't a checklist. Not It isn't something you have to go and like check truth and righteousness and peace and faith off a list. It's more something that you experience as your relationship with God grows stronger. It's not something we can put on ourselves, we can do ourselves, but it's something that God can do for us if we let him. So that was the lesson for today. Thank you. I am a city on a hill, I am the light in the darkness, Jesus living in me can change the world. I am a city on a hill, I am the light in the darkness, Jesus living in me can change the world. Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine.
now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask for or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen.